Hi, this is Nick Haraz of Clips and Handles here with Artbeats to bring you a very exciting tutorial on how to create the popular mirror effect in Premiere Pro. Now, this mirror effect can currently be seen in the title sequence for the Emmy-nominated show Bosch, as well as a very popular time-lapse Vimeo video called Mirror City. So what we're gonna learn in the next few minutes is how to work with the mirror effect, as well as a couple tricks with working with effects in Premiere Pro, such as this opening where some smoke reveals both my text, which is reflected, as well as my mirrored image below. So we'll do this all in Premiere Pro using native plugins and the fantastic time-lapse and cityscape footage supplied by Artbeats. So let's get started. If you're following along here with the Artbeats video, you'll notice that on the same page that you have the video, there are some project files that you can download and follow along with this tutorial. I'm gonna start here with this second clip in my timeline. This is some time-lapse footage of New York. And Artbeats has some great cityscapes of major cities such as New York, LA, Chicago, Toronto that you can use for all of your projects. And this works great when working with the mirror effect to get that look that you see in the show Bosch, as well as the look that you see in the Mirror Cities video that came out. So here to apply the mirror effect is really simple. Well, simply I selected my clip here in the timeline. I'm gonna to go to my effects tab that's here in the lower left and search for the word mirror. And I'm gonna find under the distort category in video effects, my mirror effect. Now that since my clip is selected, I can double click, but I can also drag and drop the effect onto the clip in the timeline. Now I'm gonna select my clip and go to my effect controls over here to see that the mirror effect is indeed implied, although I don't see anything happening to my footage in the program monitor. And the problem lies in the parameter called reflection angle that's currently set to 1920 by 540. Now, a little word on how Premiere Pro calculates your X and Y coordinates in Premiere Pro, which is your X and Y, your left and right, and your up and down. Zero, zero is in the top left-hand corner of the program monitor, while on the bottom right is however big your sequence is. In this case, it happens to be the same dimensions as our footage. So in the lower right, it stands for the coordinate 1920 by 1080. Half that number and dead centered on your screen is 960 by 540. What we can see is the reflection center starts at 1920 by 540, which actually is the furthest on the X axis. So what I'm gonna do in order to see the mirror effect is I'm gonna take 1920 and divide it by two or enter 960. We now have a mirror effect. For this particular example, this is not where I want the reflection angle to be. So I will take the reflection angle and change it from zero to 90. I'm just clicking and entering 90. I'll select my clip and hit X. And let's just give this a playback to see what we have by hitting Option or Alt K. So I'm just playing from the in to the out point. So again, the main part of the image that I wanna capture is actually the cars passing on the street. I'm just gonna hit the left arrow to move back frame by frame until I kinda of see a car gazing by. And it's not really capturing that. So I'm gonna play with the reflection center. I use 960 as a starting place and then adjust slowly the X and Y position to taste. So I'll hit option K just to play back here on my Mac and we can sort of see that mirror effect take place. So this is just one example of a load of possibilities that you can do using the mirror effect. I'm gonna move over to my next clip here in the timeline and let's select the clip and I'm here in my effects tab where I still have the mirror effect and I'll double click it to apply it to the clip. Right away uh, in the effect controls, I'll see the mirror effect is applied and I'll change its reflection center to 960 by 540. I'm gonna enter a negative 45 degree angle and I'm gonna play with my Y and angle just to get it so it's slightly peering above here. Now I'm actually gonna take the mirror effect right here, I'm gonna hit Command C to copy it and Command V to paste it. And now we have a second mirror effect applied. So you can of course add mirror effects on mirror effects to get some pretty cool looking results. And I'll go to the second mirror effect and I'll change that reflection angle to 180. So 180 is great, but this image is too condensed because of the reflection center. So I'll drag on the X value to move it over here to the left and sort of now create one white house in the middle. 
of the image. So you can see here, I'm just trying to get that white house right in the image. I don't want it to go too far or look like there's two of them. And if I select this clip and hit X on the timeline to mark it from in to out and hit option K to play from in to out, I'm able to see how that effect looks. Now to sell this even more, I want to pretend like the shot is on a dolly. So what I'll do is I'll go up into my motion controls at the very top, the built-in effects, and I'll just reveal the position and scale. I'll go to the first frame of my clip and click the stopwatch next to position and then scale. I'll then use my move my playhead in the effect controls to move to the last frame of the clip by toggling my left and right arrows. And I'll simply enter a scale value of 110 to finish and then just slightly move down on my Y position so that those top white houses never go out of frame. And with that little bit of movement, it really helps to sell the shot. I'll hit option K. Let's just say that this mirror effect was something I'm gonna use over and over again. What we can do is actually in the effect controls, select the mirror effects. So I'll select the first one and I'll then I'll command click or control click on a PC to select the second one. And if you right or control click the name mirror on either one of these effects that are selected, we can save this as a preset and then apply it to other clips. So I'll save this mirror effect as mirror three times. So saving presets, especially when using the mirror effect, if you're doing this a lot of times, can help if you have a lot of footage. So I'll hit OK, and that effect is now saved. And just to show you, if I go up to my presets, you can see my mirror three times effect. I'll move over to the last clip here in the timeline, and then just apply the mirror three times effect. And that's pretty cool. It's not what I want in this case, but if it was, I could use it. So what I'll do is I'll make some altercations to this existing effect because I do need uh, two mirrors because I want to kind of create uh, four mirrors in this image. First of all, I'll turn off the second mirror effect and I'll go to my first one and I'll make the reflection angle zero and bring the reflection center back to 960 by 540. And that's where I want to start off. If I select my clip, hit X to mark it, option K to play it back. Now I like it, although I think this footage is playing a little bit too quickly. So I'll select the clip and actually go up to my clip menu where I'll choose to go to speed and duration. And let's enter a speed of 75%. I'll hit OK. I'll select the clip, hit X to remark it, and then hit Option K to play it back. Now, just to sell this effect a little bit more, if you control click your clip, you can go down and just make sure that frame blending is enabled. So that's control click your clip and make sure frame blending is enabled. Great, now I'll work with the second mirror effect. So I have the second mirror effect here and I sort of want it to be again, 960 by 540 to start. And I'll just play with the reflection angle um, so that this mirror is kind of happening on the top of the screen. So I like that 270 degrees. I'll then just play with the reflection angle a bit because I don't want it to be dead centered at the top. So I sort of want this to be a roof that we don't completely see. And there we have uh, similar to the first shot that we saw a little bit earlier, I will hit control tilde to do a full screen playback and just hit option K to play from in to out on the clips for you guys to see. Now on to the last example I'll show you here. And uh, just to remind you, I'll go to my completed project and go to the first clip here, hit control tilde to do a full screen playback. And you can sort of see that some smoke reveals a text as well as the city background. So I'm going to show you how you can set this up from scratch, just working inside of Premiere Pro. So here in my project, what you'll see is I have two clips. So I have the original clip and I'm just on top of it. I have a smoke layer. And if I just play that back, what I want to do is use the smoke to reveal the image and some text that we're going to create. So I'll turn off that smoke layer for now on the V2 track. And the first thing I'm gonna do is nest this clip. So what I'll do is select the clip and hit clip, nest. And what I'll call this nest is text and mirror. I'll hit okay to open up the nest, double click, and then I'll hit the backslash key to fit the clip inside the timeline. So next, what we need to do is create some text, okay? And we also want to create a reflection for the text. 
So to set that up, first of all, is I'll create a new track here in the timeline. I'll control click here in the gray area and add a track. I'll add a track above the V1 track. And I'll just scroll here with my mouse to make it slightly bigger. And I'll go to my title menu to create a new default still. I'll call this title Reflection City. I'll hit OK to open up the title window. And right away, I'll go to my title tool and type in some text. So I'll click here. I'll make the first word called Reflection. Second word, City. They're together in the case of the Mirror City video, so I'll leave that by default. And I'll select the selection tool to sort of try to center this a little bit more on the screen. And first thing I'll do is change this uh, hideous font that's here by default. I'll click and select for all of my text, Helvetica New. Great, so now what I want is the first part of the text, the reflection part. What I'll do is click and then highlight it. To not be thin, I will actually choose a medium. And then I'll select the second part of my text, which is currently set to thin, and actually change that to a light. Just select all of your text right now and give it a scale up and maybe just make sure that it is center aligned so that it scales from the center of the text. Great, so there we have our reflection text. This is ready to go. I'm gonna close out my title window and inside your project, so I'll actually go into my HQ bin and you'll see that I have my reflection city text. I'm gonna just select it and drag it to the V2 track and then I'll extend its length to be that of the clip. Before I create the reflection, I'm gonna now take this piece of text and I'm gonna nest it. So I'm gonna go back to the clip menu and choose nest, and I'll call it text and reflection, just to keep track of me putting uh, all these items within nests. So I'll double click the nest to open it, and here is my reflection city text number one. I wanna make a duplicate copy of this, so I'm gonna Option click and drag down to the V1 track. I'll release my mouse first followed by the option key and now I have a copy of that text. I'll double click to open up the title editing window. So I want this to act more like a reflection. So under the fill section where you see fill type, change the fill from currently no setting to a linear gradient. And what we'll see is a line with two stops. I'm gonna click on the first stop and we're gonna make it close to black in color, okay? Now I'll change the color stops opacity in this case to be 24% because reflections tend to tail off and you can adjust this to taste. But I'm just gonna select this stop. You can move it further here or closer to determine how your reflection is gonna work once we rotate our clip or flip our clip. And you can also do that same thing with the white stopper. Cool, so you can always click a stop, change its color, and then adjust the individual stops opacity as well. So this is all we need in this case. I'll close out the title window, and temporarily I'm just gonna turn off my clip on the V2 track. So I'm gonna go to the effects and type in, in my search window, vertical, and I'll add a vertical flip. And we'll see that that's how I get my reflection. I'll turn on my clip on the V2 track. And now just with my clip on V1, I'll go into my motion tab and actually click on this little image right here for the position of my text. I'll click and I'll just drag it to position it underneath my text. If I wanna make sure not to knock it off the X axis, I can just reveal my position parameters here. I'll just make sure that this is dead at 960. So there I have my text as well as the reflection that we saw. Again, you can actually double click the reflection that's on V1 right now. And at any time, come back and play with how that reflection tapers off or the opacity that you see here. And you can also play around with the opacity color stops setting. Cool. I'm just gonna actually close out the nest containing my text and reflection and go back a step here. And now I'm into my text and mirror nest. I'll turn off my text and go to my effects tab, type in mirror to find the mirror effects and from the distort category, apply it to the clip. Quickly bring the reflection center to 960 by 540 and change the reflection angle to 90. Now it's positioned there. I'll play with the Y parameter. I'll actually bring it up a bit 
so that I have a kind of makes seem like the city is level here in the shot. I think it just looks a lot nicer. So I'll select the text and here under the motion parameters, just do some quick keyframing with the scale. So I will add a keyframe on the first frame of the text and reflection clip, move my playhead to the end in the effect controls tab and just bring down the scale to 90. And there we have, as the clip moves forward, the reflection city text moves backward. Now I didn't easy ease these keyframes because they just, the movement happens for the full duration. Now, another thing that happens in the uh, Mirror City video is the video fades out before the reflection city text. So what I'm gonna do is move my playhead to approximately six seconds here. I'm gonna select the clip's out point and just hit E. Now with it trimmed there, I want this clip not to just sort of jump off screen. I want it to fade out. So I'll go to my wrench menu here, the timeline display settings, and choose to show video keyframes. I'll then go to my V1 track and expand it so I can see. And this line is the actual, the clip's opacity by default. If I control click on it, you can see that you can bring up several parameters and keyframe directly in the timeline. What I'll do is I want to command or control click this line, command click on a Mac, control click on a PC to add two keyframes and create a fade out. Uh, and you can see it's a long fade out of around two seconds. So there we have the fade out that we see in the Mirror City video. I'll close out this nest going back here to my project. And finally, we just want it to be revealed by the above smoke clip. So I just turn that on. And the first thing I'm going to do is select it, hit command R and enter a speed of 200%. And this will get it to be directly, basically the same length as the clip underneath. That was not planned at all. Great. So in order to get the smoke to reveal the clip underneath, we need to use a track mat here in Premiere Pro. We're going to apply the track mat to the text and mirror nest on the video one track. If we go to our effects tab, I'll clear my search results and just type in the word track, which will reveal my track mat key under the keying category. I'll drag that to my text and mirror nest on the V1 track. And in the effect controls, I'm going to set the mat to be instead of none video two, which is the smoke clip. And I'm going to ask it to composite using the mats luminance. So what this is, is anything that's white, right? We'll see anything that's black. It's going to disregard the track mart is smart enough to first of all, turn off the video two track. So we don't see the smoke. And then we see wherever the smoke appears is where we now see our video image as well as our text. So I'll just hit the control tilde key to make that full frame so we can see the end results. Looking pretty cool. Now I think the image actually fades out a little too early in the case that I did here. So I'm gonna double click to go back in my nest and extend my video clip to now seven seconds. So I'll move to seven seconds with my playhead, select the video one clips out point, hit E to extend it and then just drag on my opacity keyframes to bring them down. So that's just showed a little bit longer. And if I go to my mirror city sequence, I'll hit control tilde to make a full screen playback. And we can see here our great end result. Once again, my name is Nick Haraz from Clips and Handles. It was fun showing you this popular mirror effect that we see in shows such as Bosch and as mentioned the Vibio mirror city. Hope you have some fun experimenting with the project and some beautiful Art Beats footage. Thanks.